Hello there, I'm Alger Hill, and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4, Make Mexico Great Again. That's right. We are going to become fascist Mexico, we're going to push back Trump's wall, and we're going to get rid of Trump and put whatever weird person is in charge of fascist Mexico, because this is a two-type video. One, it is the first episode of my new Let's Play where we make Mexico great again, and two, it is the guide video to give you for the help of the achievements for Revenge of Montezuma and Sunset Invasion. The well, first one requires you to reclaim the old territory of Mexico against the United States, basically conquer the US, and Sunset Invasion requires you to own a province on in Europe without being a part of any non-South American faction. So, similar to my previous uh, achievement guide, which you guys seem to really like, it's pushing around 11,000 views right now for uh, Royal Britannia Baby to the One Empire achievement. This is going to help you with that achievement and getting started with the rather difficult Mexico start. So, the very, very first steps that you need to know and understand are take all your crappy, crappy troops and move them over here. So, because the first things we do once we become fascist, take all of these so we gain. You only can really take the four countries because you can't really take all of Panama because of the bloody US. But what you do do is you gain four, well you can take five actually, you get five civilian factories and five military factories because you get one from each of them, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, first steps there, you do that. Next, research. Research better uh, infantry equipment because you have crappy infantry equipment. Even though you are crappy infantry equipment, make it anyway because you need to get soldiers out there. And you'd have boots on the freaking ground, okay? You need to start getting lots of soldiers. The equipment can be replaced later. The important thing is that you have the divisions. Next, you obviously need to buy more steel from the US, our lovely trading partners. We're totally not going to invade them later. Don't worry about it. Uh, second research, I it's you can either go industry or the engineering. I mean, the minus two percent research time, it might start to add up. So maybe do that. It only takes it only adds up if it goes on for a longer time. The key thing is that we want to do a couple things before we reach the war, when the war will probably happen late 1939, early 1940. What you want to try and do is to have improved artillery, because the, it is mildly better than the first one. Uh, it has an additional breakthrough stat, has 10 more soft attack and 5 more defense. And you also want to make sure you have weapons too, because in comparison to weapons 1, 6 more defense, an extra breakthrough, 3 more soft attack. It's basically just pretty damn good. It's also one more piercing, which can help out. Probably not, but you know, it's still useful. So those are your first researchers. Next moves, don't ever build civilian factories. Don't be a scrub. Build military factories, all right? Be a man, okay? Do it. So you build military factories, and they're going to take a bloody age. And yes, you're not going to have many civilian factories, but you'll get them through national focuses. Your very first national focuses, you want to go fascist as soon as bloody possible. So... You're going to click on to political effort. Political effort is going to give you 120 political power. With the very first political power purchase, you are going to get the Quintana, the fascist demagogue, to allow you to get lots of fascistic love. Then, obviously, you go collectivist ethos, and then down to nationalism focus, and you stop there with that tree for now. That allows you to start basically getting 0.2 fascism a day, and you should be fascist before the end of the year, honestly. So that's fantastic. After that, your next steps are to go down industrial effort and go down the armament effort areas so you can get three free military factories because when you have three to start with, getting three is a 100% increase of factories. So you have to do it basically. Next steps then are, depending on how it goes, you want to make sure you try and time these equipment effort bonuses for the artillery and infantry equipment. So. This one should probably be taken around mid-1938 to allow you to research improved artillery. And that allows you to then build improved artillery and start cranking out artillery to replace your troops. Because you guessed it, we need to end up with um, artillery like this in our divisions because it adds a redonkulous. It's 69 soft attack. It makes units a little bit weaker, a little bit less HP. It makes them a bit more easy to shatter but we're going to be on the massive offensive against the uh, US and we're going to go supreme firepower. Speaking of supreme firepower, you want to make sure you tie your national focuses with the doctrine effort. Army effort, doctrine effort and doctrine effort 2 give you basically a 50% bonus for doctrines, allowing you to get three doctrines basically for half price, which is an excellent bonus, which allows you to get all the way up to mobile defense. And these three are mandatory before you fight the US because they're going to be at least here anyway. 20% soft attack, 10 organization, and 20% defense, as well as very valuable tactics. 
Dispersive bullet barrage and elastic defense being particularly good tactics. I would then also go then to dispersed support because your line artillery. This isn't a very good one, but it does allow you to get better recovery for when your units move back and forward because artillery has slow recovery rate. And this one's fantastic, 10% soft attack. But it's only useful if you can really get artillery into these positions here. It also frees up a large amount of infantry equipment. As you get later in, into this, around 1939, you're going to find yourself with a deficiency of infantry equipment. But then when you suddenly swap this over to artillery, you're going to find that there's like, you know, you, you gain like 6,000 infantry equipment because of all the divisions that are on the ground. Uh, you ignore air, you ignore tanks. They just don't matter, honestly. That's all you do. You just do this. You set it up as I've done here, and you essentially are going to wait. There you go, we're now making 20, you know, 10 to bajillion infantry equipment, and I just realized I'm not actually training in divisions, so I should definitely do that. I train four divisions, and I'm gonna put them there. So the first four get put over here, and so they will join these guys in their push this way, which just, you know, makes it a bit faster in terms of the crushing of these guys. So the very first thing we do, as soon as we get the political power, as I said, is we get the fascist demagogue, and we move towards fascism. And by moving towards fascism, we gain, first of all, the ability to go to war economy, from civilian economy, as soon as war tension hits above, is it 20? 15, which will happen in mid-early 1937. By that point, we should have conquered all this anyway. Um, and also allows us to start justifying. So the second we do turn fascist, it is obviously random. We don't actually get the choice of when it happens, which is unfortunate. But... The moment it does, we start justifying on each of the nations in turn as soon as we get the political power. And if you do it right, and if you know time goes for you, I'm, we're playing historical focus on, by the way, to make the game a bit more predictable, because otherwise things can happen in a really weird fashion. And let me tell you why. You see, the US has uh, a delightful national focus. And apart, they have lots of really interesting ones, but the main thing you have to worry about is this one. If they can reaffirm the Monroe Doctrine, and then once they get all four of these, which increase democracy support, by the way, a good reason why you go fascist early so they don't counteract it with these, if he gets Pax Americana, the USA is then able to intercede in any South American wars, including Central American. So if you're in the middle of a fight and they get that, they can say, stop it or we fight you, and you're obviously not ready, so you lose. And I found if you go historical AI off, uh, I've already done this and got the achievement, but basically what's happened is I played it with off and I did about 20 test games and just by chance they didn't get that so I was able to push. But with it historical AI on, they don't get it until it's too late. They don't really get it until you're already fighting them and the nations are dead anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So, you just don't, you kind of do want to go historical mode on, otherwise you're going to find yourself getting to, 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 to 1938 and realising that, oh, the non-historical non AI has randomly decided to go all the freaking way down into a Pax Americana and wrecked my day. And that would suck. In the, mo in the meantime, what they do is they go like WA WPA, uh, war bonds they do as soon as they can. They do war propaganda at some point once tension occurs. Uh, once war things have actually started. They'll go a kind of continuous route as the world goes. But they shouldn't do anything with the Monroe Doctrine or Pax Americana and shouldn't mess up our day. So... Like I said, honestly, this is a quite a, it's a simple start. Honestly, it's very easy. A couple of tricks that I like. Um, once you start getting some national focuses down and start getting, like you've got the doctrines, you've got some equipment efforts, you've got the artillery, around like mid-1938, early 1939, finished motorization effort, which allows you to research motoriza motorized units in about 18 days, I think. And what that means is you can then start making motorized units in your factories and if you can get enough if you can get enough for let's say 1200 if you can get 1200 motorized units that is to say four divisions you can have four reasonably powerful divisions able to really quickly just rampage through everything because encirclement will be your friend honestly now, these guys only move at four kilometers an hour i think they move at 12 or 16 and it's so fantastic to have just a few motorized divisions that aren't even very good at fighting. But their key thing is that they can they can go... I usually put them here from uh, whatever this province name is up to there. And although there is a river, a bloody long river, once the whole front happens and you're pushing into the US, you can grab here and you can start cutting them off. Another alternative is to put them here and try to encircle 
down to there and you can kill a bunch of units. But that's that's long game. Key thing is we're just basically getting ready to take these and gain their factories. Cool, reorganization of Rhineland and political effort done. Collectivos ethos is the first next thing we do. So goodbye, democracy support. And then as I said earlier, the first thing we do, Louis Luigi Quintana for the fascist demagogue. Fascism on the rise. I actually don't know what the difference is between the two of these, but I always check the, click the higher ups and it usually goes well for me. Couple tips that a lot of people don't realize when playing Mexico. When the war starts with the US, they will join the allies and they will call in the United Kingdom. And there is a United Kingdom province right here. So you bloody best make sure you have troops here. In almost every single time, I just keep two divisions here. As soon as the war starts, they get called in, I put them there, and they almost always then suddenly find themselves fighting off like six divisions being landed, including like a tank. And because they're defending a coastal, they always win. And that just stops Britain because, you know, the AI doesn't do naval invasions, basically. So you're essentially safe. Second tip, Panama. They own the little bit of Panama, Colon. So what will happen is they'll get um, a border agreement with Panama and they'll suddenly start pushing up. Don't have all your armed forces over here, allowing them to just value from the south. Keep, like, because there's only one province, keep just two divisions or three divisions of infantry to stop them. And then they won't be able to attack you anymore. In fact, you might even be able to push down and then take Panama, which would be delicious. So, going to keep going through this, and as soon as you become fascist, which will take, which honestly will take quite a while, but look, you're getting it pretty quickly. It's going to be quite a lot of delicious game. The ultimate aim is kinda to have, okay, is to have one general's worth, so 24 divisions on the western flank moving towards Los Angeles, securing this area and then moving up quickly to San Francisco and trying to keep and trying to hold the mountains and defend against them. And then have one and then have the rest of your units roughly 40 to 60 divisions depending on how quick you can do it. Here, pushing as quickly as you can up to here. I like to make the first line to Louisiana and Little Rock and then you start moving up otherwise. There is a lot of micromanaging. You will spend freeze. That's okay, it's a Spanish Civil War. Yeah, yeah, no one cares. So let's go back on to engineering. Hang on one sec. So the next thing we want to do is you want to make sure you get basic machine tools because production for efficiency is a very good idea. You will spend maybe an hour setting the game up, just getting ready to do this, you know, moving through, establishing the game and making yourself awesome, making Mexico great again. And then you'll spend 10 hours fighting the war with the US, even if even though it'll only be like a tenth of the actual time or even less, there's actually elapsed in game because you'll be on very slow speed. And I would highly recommend that you do not let the AI control your units because it's just the worst. It's so bad. Okay, it's just, it's so terrible. They'll just, I mean, there's, I mean, when you have very few divisions, every division counts, you know, and then you have a unit from over there reinforcing over here, it just makes no sense. I would definitely make sure you manu you obviously set the offensive plans, delete them as soon as you start them and manually control each individual offense and move into province. It does mean that some units can get left behind, but if you're able to make really fast pushes, you can do some disgusting things, okay? And you can like rampage. The key to defeating the US eventually, which you will have to do and claim all of their power, you will also then have to fight all of Canada, by the way, which will be the worst. And you will definitely want to make sure you're producing, as the war goes on and you're starting to win the war, you want to produce motorized divisions ready to counteract what they do. Uh, you want to make sure you go through the general industry tech and efficiency machine tools when valid. Screw this, no one cares about this. Army doctrine, you want to go down here. Improved artillery is the minimum you need for the artillery. You, the army doesn't exist. You need to go support equipment so you can get engineering because you need it. It's such a good defensive bonus. Okay. Right. Pretty good. What other tips can I do? Right. I know some tips I know I can give you. Ooh, infantry equipment finished. So let's go through the order of your purchases with your PowerPoints. As I said, fascist demagogue is first. We're going to get 150 soon. Your second one should go either towards industry concern to improve your industry tech or towards the military theorist. Either way, you're probably going to want to do one than the other. So the industry one, then the military theorist. You can start ramping up additional army experience. Uh, any other points will then start to go towards the justification on these guys. 
And after the justification of these guys is finished, you're then going to want to make... By then, you'll be able to go to War Economy. And once War Economy is finished, you're the idea, eventually you're going to need to go towards Limited Conscription to be able to get more troops. Though, National Focus of Militarism and Military Youth gives you 7%. And we've just finished this Collective Ethos, so we can go to Nationalism Focus now. Then, what you need to do is eventually you need to have a chief of army staff. I like to have army drill while I'm recruiting. And then once the war started, I switched to army defense. You're gonna to wanna to have army regrouping as the military high command. Honestly, that's the only one. You have no armor, you have no naval AA, and you've got no bombers, so they're useless. And after that, they start to mount up a little bit. Like you can go material designer. It is very helpful if you have the PowerPoints to go towards artillery designer when you want to be researching the artillery too. Same for the infantry equipment designer for your weapons too. But it all depends on your own priorities. Division organization. As I said, your inf early, in the, early in the video, your infantry need to be two artillery here, and they need to have support artillery and engineer support. Uh, you can kind of ignore cavalry. Your motorized divisions will start with six motorized. They will need, at the very least, support artillery to give them the ability to actually break through units. As you get more factory power and able to produce more motorized units as you rampage through the US, I would certainly recommend that you add more motorized units to your divisions. Honestly, that's kind of all you need. As long as you have the supplies ready and the equipment stockpiled when the war begins, you'll be able to beat the AI, especially if you do smart encirclements. I've managed at one time, I managed to, from here, no, it was here, and move up here, and I trapped nine divisions, including three tanks right here. And that was immensely helpful. Seriously, it really helped push. And then you can start moving up. Great. And now, goals. US goal. The US will capitulate when they have lost a very large percentage of their victory points. I've generally found that means they need to have lost Los Angeles, San Francisco, um, all the pile points here, and I generally find myself having to go all the way up to Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Newark, New York, and I honestly had to, I had to either choose between going to boss. I managed, last time I did it, I had cavalry instead of motorized units. I didn't enjoy it as much, but they were able to push through here grab it and then double back and move up to Detroit. But by the time we got close to it, we capitulated them. Remember the victory points are gained both for uh, individual like cities, but also for actual provinces and territories within them. So you want to be grabbing those as well, but be moving towards things like DC, which is 40 and Philly, which is 20 and New York, which is 30. So once you get these, you can seriously dampen their war effort. And then basically it's West Coast, East Coast, bits of the central, South, New Orleans is actually 10, which is fantastic. And basically you'll find yourself having like a bit of this, this, all of this, some here, and this, and that will capitulate them. Makes sense to me. Any other things I can say late game wise? Final tips. Once you push through the US, you have to contend with Canada. And to capitulate Canada, you need to take all of this, and you need to make sure you take a couple of these, and there's one around here somewhere. Canada was the hardest for me because I didn't realize that there was still so much to get. So we just finished nationalism. So instead of going militarism, as I said earlier, I'm going to go to industrial effort. And then we can start making some gains. It's going to go great, guys. So we'll continue in the next episode. We are probably about 10% away from being fascist. It depends if we get a coup. Also, never do the civil war. Same thing with Britain. Never, ever, ever do the civil war. Civil war is not important. You will lose half your troops. You will have to fight over your ground. Factories will get destroyed. Ignore it. Just let it happen naturally. They'll force a they'll force a coup. So just wait. So thank you for watching. I hope the guide is helpful, and I hope you also enjoy the new Let's Play that I've just started. I'm putting a video up every single day, so do pay attention. So I was out drill, and I will continue to be. And remember, make Mexico great again, and you know, revenge Montezuma, and invade from the sunset. I think these are really good achievement names. Bye-bye.